What's up, y'all? Keith, MJKL Speedworks. Day two of putting the motor back together, cleaning up, preparation, all that good crap. I tried to come out here and get a little bit of a jump start. Do some of this stuff pre-whatever, uh, pre quicker. Number one piston, picked it up, and I ran into a problem. So let's get into what exactly is fucked up already. All right, as you see, I've already got the rings off. Top ring oil ring with two retainers and the middle ring broke as fuck um turns out that this middle ring goes in this groove um was cracked smashed in and filled in with crud um you know the piston walls didn't reflect that other than being glazed over and I, i'm not sure so it just happens that the very first damn piston that I pull out is broke. That uh, kind of pisses me off, guys. So uh, anyway, now I got to buy some rings. And I didn't want to buy any. I was just going to use these. There's nothing wrong with them. Shit. Uh, here's the top ring. Let me give you an example here. Look at that. Macro. There we go. Then I set it and it started working. And then it went away. You can see right around the top here where my thumb is that it's not burred up or anything. They're fine. And we're going to re-gap them and make them turbo rings anyway. So, whatever. I got my, you haven't seen this, I've got my grinder slash wire wheel that I bought on uh, Facebook Marketplace for 10 bucks from some old dude. So, <laughs> uh, I'm going to fire this up, give it a polish, and uh, I'll try to get this on camera, but I doubt I'm going to be able to do it. There's nothing, There's nowhere to... I'm in a little building in here, and there's nowhere to do this, so. If I can find a place, I will, but this thing vibrates the shit out of this table. So, most likely won't happen, but I'll see what I can do. All right, I've got the phone propped up on a ladder. Let's see how long it takes to fall. <laughs> I say that every time. It never really falls, but you know, whatever. All right. y'all think holy shit look at that y'all those ring lands much better they're still crudded up but uh now that i have a broken piston ring i'll use that to clean them out so keep going here a little more and uh oh fucking great look at that guys jeez
Much better. Not perfect, but much better. I'm going to try the rods a little bit here. Not that it mattered. It works though. broken piece of ring. I use it to kind of this shit to come out just now. There's lots of it in there. You know? Look at a shit ton. As I'm pulling it out, the rings are moving more free. It'll just really, really crud it up. So, I'm going to continue on with this piston for a little bit. And uh, I'll give you an update here in a minute. What's up, y'all? So last night I gave up after I got a little tired. I didn't want to sit out here and get irritated. After one of the rings broke. I cleaned another two piston and I was like, eh, it's already almost 1 a.m. The hell with it, right? Right. So, I've kind of cleaned up just a touch. I got some brake cleaner and some carb cleaner out. I'm going to try to maybe set this camera up in a, a, a better spot of some kind, if there is one. I kind of don't think there is one. So, may just wing it. I want to get some of this stuff on video so y'all can see. I'm going to take one of the pistons and connecting rods apart so you guys can see how that happens uh, I don't really need to do it in this application because I'm just using what I have but in case somebody's wondering how to do it I'm going to show you so I'm going to grab a couple pistons we'll lay them out here on the table and we'll get started all right so maybe I've got this thing set up good let's try a couple here all right for this I've got my Harbor Freight Extendo turn dick, you know, those pliers, uh, some little cheap. Actually, these are probably expensive. These are real channel lock, you know, those pliers. Like, read the engraving legit right there. Channel lock, yeah. So, who cares? All right, Put a couple of towels down here. I want to make a mess. As uh, <clears throat> just like I did on the other ones, number three, I'm going to keep it that way. Then I want to show you guys something. So, on these bearings on the rods, there's a tang on the bearings, which is a small mark. You can see them in there, they're only on one side. We're not on the other side. All right, if you ever wonder, gosh, I've taken the connecting rod off. It's not connected to the piston anymore. Well, which way does the rod go? Well, the easy way to remember this is these tangs go on the exhaust valve side of the head. So when you're looking at it, you see the pin there. 
The pin goes toward the front of the engine. When you flip the head over and look, the exhaust valve is always smaller than the intake valve. You'll just make sure that these tangs are on the side closest to the exhaust valve, whichever side that may be. Then you'll know, oh, that's the exhaust valve or that's the intake valve. And I just need to spin it the other way. You know, your piston's always going to go pin facing forward toward the crank pulley, but you may have this rod on backwards. It's not the end of the world. It'll still work. It's just for oiling purposes. So, um, a quick tip for everybody. Remember that. And of course, you're going to forget that now that I said remember it. And that's cool too. I don't care. All right. So, in the uh, yesterday's video, the piston rings were froze. They're not froze on this one. I'm already happier than I was last night. Hopefully we can see pretty well. I wonder if we can zoom. But I got this. I ghetto rigged up this thing with tape. No, I ain't going to zoom. So that's going to have to work with what you got. First ring out. Slowly pop it off. Just like the other ones, these look perfectly fine. Except the one that was broke. I'm a little salty about that. Oh! Uh, I ordered LS9 head gaskets this morning. I ordered new piston rings from Molly. They're the Molly coated Molly rings. Right. I uh, ordered those. I ordered Comp X stock style LQ4 lifters uh, because the lifters do just fine. And if you break a lifter, you just put another lifter in and don't, you know, stress. You just put another one in. Thought about doing LS7 lifters which will fit, but you need different push rods, I've read. Some people say, no, you don't. Well, uh, they're the same price for LS7 lifters as it was for LQ4 lifters. So why not just get the LQ4 lifters that I know work? So I ordered those. Along with the head gaskets, I ordered some new dowel pins for the heads. Um, I ordered one more thing. What else did I order? Lifters, head gaskets, rings. Oh, that was it. Lifters, head gaskets, rings, and dowel pins. All of them from Summit. And they're all supposed to be here uh, in three to four business days. I'll put up a picture right here. And we'll see uh, the order that I made. Or maybe after the clip is over. Whatever. I'll put the picture up so you can see it regardless. This one's a little stuck. Once I put some pressure on the ring, it didn't want to move there. And it doesn't really matter because I'm putting new rings on. And I was thinking about this today. Well, you could just break all the rings out now. Who cares? Well, while that's true, I'm not going to do that because I want to uh, keep these rings for spares. In case I break a ring or burn a ring, I can just uh, you know go to the stash uh, gap it real quick and slam it in there and put it back together and have it going the next day. Uh, I do not mind pulling the motor out and working on it. Some of you are going to go, oh man, but you just built that thing and it's, dude, it's part of the fun. I can send it. One other thing on these rings, they are directional as far as what goes up and what goes down. If you look closely, right, I'll land on this. See that little dot? Focus, you heathen. There it is. That dot right there is supposed to face up on these rings. Um, when you're looking at the piston, so. Piston up, dot up. This is ring two, that's ring one. Both of them need to face up. We'll go over that and we put it back together. Just a little quick tip. Anyone who didn't know. 
Now we'll pull this oil ring off and it looks worse than the uh, other two. This is where the most caking goes on, I guess. That's cool. On the back of these pistons, there's a little indent right here. You can grab the ring right there and pull it up. You could probably get these like fancy picks. I don't have any. I'm just using a pocket screwdriver or a micro screwdriver, whatever you want to call it. Where does this ring start? Where do you start? There we are. These are one point five. Oh, no, I forget what size these are. Let me shut up. Regular rings are one point five millimeters. Um, these are much thinner and flimsier, so they're not gonna break as easy. They flex and bend before they break. Bottom. Then we got the actual o ring here. Give it a lift. Take your time. Don't ever use them. Just take your time and be careful. Let's see how easy that popped up. You can see right there. All right, rings off. Now we can attack uh, the wrist pin and get it pulled out. Uh, holding in the wrist pin is a circlip, which is just a little ring. Uh, we can pop that ring out with a screwdriver and a pair of needle nose pliers, which I will show you how to do now. Look closely in here. You can see the clip inside this indent right here. If you look closely, you can see the, the ring right there. We're gonna pop that out, and it pops out on both sides. And you usually wanna put the open end of the clip toward the top of the piston here. So actually on this part right here, the clip isn't there, that's the open part of the clip. Let's pull that out. That's probably the same with most pistons. I know there's some that are different, but on a Honda it's exactly the same. Uh, some of them have snap rings and whatnot. That's fine. Let's use a pair of snap ring pliers. Well, that ring went over there somewhere. It comes flying out at Mach 10 toward my head. Still pretty gummed up and whatnot in there. I hear you over there. <sighs> I bounced this one off my hand. So it was like the custom. Let's see if I can get this other one that went back here. Miracle Grow. That's stuff. Some, some tiki torch fuel. Yeah, man. Let's burn some shit up. What do you say? I have the crank stored back here in uh, shop towels and soaked in WD-40. It went behind that perfect, perfectly, so I had to grab this freaking ginormous crank and move it around. And that bitch is heavy, man. Heavy weight. Anyway, both clips are out. Now these pistons don't always fall out. Even though these are floating wrist pins, sometimes they're difficult to knock out. So I'm gonna go grab a hammer real quick and a socket. Bowel pain hammer.
What size is that? Nine sixteenths. Man, that looks just about right. I don't know if it is or not, but it looks pretty damn close. So just about right. And now you can see coming out. Just a little credit up, that's all. Maybe a lot credit up. You know? my hand these damn rings are the edge of the ring lines are sharp Oops. there and they look good though look how nice and shiny I can't really see I got poor lighting in here I bought shop lights out there they buy any in here Nice and shiny. Perilously close to my finger. Right? And here we are, folks. Now, I'm going to cheat and use my Sharpie. What I see here is that the stamp on this rod is on the left side if the, mark, if the dot of the piston is facing towards me. So right now, there's the dot of the piston right here at my thumb. And there's a stamp on the side of this rod. Right there, you can see the stamping. And it's all in the, it's, it's, it's it, I can see it. Damn, somebody's shooting outside and they're shooting the hell out of something. So anyway, I can see the dot in the piston and I can see the stamp at the same time. So I'm going to remember that when I put this back together. That way I know I took it out just like I put it in. I like to get that the rest of the way out. I don't guess it matters. But still, I'd like to get it the rest of the way out. I was going to write on that and say it points this way, but I don't need to. A damn bigger socket. Do I have a bigger socket? That's a pretty big one right here. Ha! That's what she said. <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. That's as far as I can go without breaking something. Man, man. How about that. Yeah, man. Kind of like that. Wrist pin, piston. All right, now let's say we do a little scraping here. If we can. Maybe I hit this with some brake clean first. It's pretty crudded up. Brake parts cleaning. Oh, that's all right. We're getting hot tonight. Mm -hmm. That nasty shit right there dripping out, y'all. Mama's good home cooking.
sliding smooth now, by God. All the shit that's coming out. It's just like flaking off. The beautiful thing is we only have to do this six more times, y'all. You want to use factory stuff? You just got to send it and dig, with, dig in and do it, man. Dig in and do it. This piston's a lot cleaner than number one was. And it's probably about the same as number two was. A lot of crud falling out of this one really rapidly. Doesn't have to be perfect, y'all. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of guys who don't even do this. They just fucking send it. Which I'm cool with. Send that shit. I'm going to do the same thing. By the way, if you're going to get LS9 head gaskets, which I highly recommend you do, uh, you need to get them soon because Summit runs out pretty quick. Random shit falling in the corner wasn't freaky at all. Alright, I'm going to... Uh, Start hitting this with the wire wheel and uh, giving it a little buff. See if we can't clean a bunch of this shit out, y'all. And we'll also hit it with some oven cleaner and uh, try to get all the gunk out of the inside. First, I'm going to move this damn garbage guard on this stupid what size is that? Half. The guard is in the way when I try to use the damn grinder over here. I'm going to fix that right now. Right in the way every time I try to stick a piston in there to grind. Damn it. Grab a wrench. So many wrenches. Mm. That's half on one side, now sixteenths on the other. Really? Right. Obviously, that's adjustable. Now it's going to be loud. You won't be able to hear me. Sorry. I'm actually going to shut this. Is everybody else is asleep because it's like almost midnight. My turn.
I'm good, y'all. I'll do a little bit more right there. I'm just saying. All right, oven cleaner is badass, but you you can't let it sit too long. You only let it sit like thirty seconds because it's what's well, badass. So be smart. Make sure you follow all your safety guidelines, everybody. Not. <laughs> Send it. Give that a second to do its doo doo. Meanwhile, we can maybe screw around with this thing for a minute. I don't know. It's not that bad. You don't do any good at all to clean on a rod. Doesn't have any bearing in how it works. Nobody cares. So I think I'll probably just leave the old rods alone. Gen 4, baby. Set that over there out of the way. I got some in the pot right here, soapy water. Dude. It's like it's toxic waste. You. Yeah. You can see it boiling the grease away. Man, that shit's crazy. Oil and sludge be gone. Good old fashioned oven cleaner that you buy at the dollar store. That's where I got it. Give it a dip and swish here. Well, a lot of it's coming out. Not all of it, but a lot. I'm not asking for a miracle, y'all. I just want it cleaner. If you want nice, beautiful pistons, I would tell you to go go buy some. Honestly, I was trolling around on Summit. Just looking at prices of stuff, and you can get a nice set of pistons for LSs. I mean, they're not like top field dragster grade, but you can get a decent set for like 350 bucks. So, in the event that I break one, hell, I might consider buying. Uh, nice pistons, but I really don't want to do it. Really rather not. All the shit that come off just this one piston. This rag was new. Yummy. <laughs> so 
crud down in there. No, I just kind of stuff it down in there. Way better. Still a little bit of mess. Hit it with some ether. By God, there ain't none in there now. Smooth, baby, smooth. I like it. All right, y'all. I reckon we can put this back together. Hopefully it goes together. Uh, better than it came apart. You know, kind of had to beat it in the submission. Hoping it don't act as stupid. Come back in. Some WD lubricant because pin facing me stamped writing facing me like so Like I got a beat on it. Lightly. With the crud removed, it moves much better though. Barely gotta touch it and it moves. There, I can move it with my thumb. Yeah, man. Got a little tighter right there. Party over. Let me do it with my socket. How about just a stinchion? Yeah, that'll work. Lightly tapping that. Not wailing on it. I'm going to go ahead and put one of these third clips back in on this side. Start with the open end. And give it a squeeze and get both open ends started if you can. Snap ring pliers are a little easier to use if you ask me. But these are just fine. Just require a little of that Bruno Mars finesse. And there you go. Same thing on this side. Oh, almost popped me in the face right there, y'all. You see that there? I got the open end of the ring facing up here. You can see the bottom sticking out. I'm going to push this way. Keep pressure on it, and it'll get down in there. And just kind of, kind of gently force it down in there. 
with all your might. Mm. Kind of like that. Harbor Freight Needle Guys. Oh, these are the real ones, channel locks. Only the best. All right, I hadn't snapped down in there yet, so you gotta kind of work it around, and clearly y'all heard that. Ta-da! That is one fully re reassembled piston. No oil on it, so it doesn't move as good as it did when we took it out. Give it a little lubricant, what do you say? I spray everything with WD-40 now. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Soak it all in WD-40. That's why they're floating. And that's no big deal because that stays under there all the time. I like it, y'all. I like it. That one moves easier. Hmm. Well, hopefully I did that right. I think I did. <clears throat> that looks pretty damn good. Oddly enough, the neighbors only shot the neighborhood up for a couple seconds there and they stopped. They usually let off more than one clip. That seemed a little half-hearted. I'm not going to put these rings back on. We're just going to save them. Because uh, we got new ones on the way. I got to find somewhere to put them. All right, right there. All right, so you guys saw how that goes together. I'm going to put this back on the shelf. I'm going to spray everything with WD-40. That looks freaking great now compared to what was there, right? Yeah, let's do that. Bam. Tits. All right. <laughs> All right, well, I'm putting this back on the shelf. I'm going to get to cracking. I'm doing more of them. Um... We'll be back after that. All right, y'all. Changed clothes. Took a shower and uh, forgot to do this part of the video. So I'm done for the night. It's about 3.15 in the morning. I'm beat. So you see the parts are on the shelf. Everything's ready to rock. I'm just waiting on some other stuff. Two to three more business days. It'll all be here. I can start putting it back together short of head studs and valve springs. That's all I got left. So, next check, maybe we can afford some more stuff. First new parts I've bought. What are you going to do? Anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe, share. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you understand how a piston comes apart from the rod, how it all goes back together, and how we clean it up. It's not that difficult. Get out there with the tools and do it. You can do it. It's not that complicated. There's my little rinky-dink toolbox. What else do you need? So, anyway, here's a couple videos for you guys to watch. Look back for the series. See what you think. Uh, comment on them. Not even getting comments. Y'all are scared to comment. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll see you guys next video. Peace.